Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk a bit more about tangent planes. Specifically, we want to talk about some concepts that are related to tangent planes. Really, these concepts are the same thing as a tangent plane. They're just called by different names, or the same ideas are just labeled slightly differently. And so remember, if we have a tangent plane to a surface given by z is equal to a function of x and y at some given point x naught, y naught, and z naught, then this is our formula for describing that uh, tangent plane. Right, we could write the tangent plane as z is equal to z naught plus the partial derivative of our function with respect to x at our point of interest multiplied by the quantity x minus x naught. Then we add to that the partial derivative of our function evaluated at the point of interest times y minus y naught. And another way that's going to be convenient to rewrite this for the upcoming discussion we're about to have is just to move that constant of z naught back over to the left hand side and rewrite that left hand side as z minus z naught instead. So one quick little note to make is another name for a tangent plane is a linear approximation. Right? What is a tangent plane? It's a linear multivariable function that is best approximating the surface at the point of interest. So another name for that is the linear approximation for our function or surface. So that's just something to watch out for when you're working through exercises or homework or doing a question on a quiz or an exam. If you're asked to find the linear approximation for a multivariable function, that's just asking you to find the tangent plane for that function. And so another concept that is related to tangent lines and linear approximations in single variable calculus is the idea of a differential. And we have an extension of that idea for our multivariable functions as well. And so for our single variable functions, if we had y is equal to some function of x, then we could express the differential of y as the derivative of our function with respect to x, or f prime, times dx, or the differential of x. All right, so the differential in single variable calculus, like dy is equal to f prime times dx, is really just kind of trying to capture the idea that if we want to measure the change in y, we can do so by looking at the rate of change of our function with respect to x and multiplying it by some small increment that represents that st change or step size we are taking in the x direction. And so this is trying to measure like the total change or difference our function takes from moving at the point it is currently at to the next point. The total differential extends that idea to a function of two variables. So now if we have z is equal to a function of two variables x and y, then we denote the total differential of z as dz. Notice that this is not our curly d like we use for a partial derivative. It is like a straight d. And so the total differential of z is going to be given by the partial derivative of our function with respect to x times the differential of x plus the partial derivative of our function with respect to y times the differential of y. Or similarly, we can rewrite this as dz, this is not curly dz, but just dz, the total differential of z is equal to, and then just kind of using that Leibniz-like notation, the partial derivative of z with respect to x times the differential of x plus the partial derivative of z with respect to y times dy, or the differential of y. And so this really is trying to capture the same idea as the differential we saw in single variable calculus. The total differential of z is trying to measure or kind of calculate the difference uh, z is going to take on as we move away from the point we are currently at or the total change in our function. And if we think about what this formula includes, it makes a lot of sense. We think of the partial derivative of z with respect to x as the rate of change of our function or surface as we move in the x direction. And then the differential of x is the step size we take in the x direction. Similarly, the partial derivative of z with respect to y is the rate of change of our function in the y direction. And then dy is how far we are going to be moving in that y direction. So we add the change in our function by moving in the x direction to the change in our function by moving in the y direction. Adding that together gives us the total change in our function as we move away from the point we are currently at. And so these differentials or these total differentials really are just a reformulation of a linear approximation or a tangent plane or tangent line, right? This total differential of dz is essentially playing the same role as z minus z naught in our original or earlier formula. And then the partial derivative of z with respect to x is just the partial derivative of our function with respect to x. We multiply that by the differential of x. But the differential of x, like the differential of z, is really just a change between our x values. So we can write that symbolically as x minus x naught. 
and then repeating this in the same steps for the last term, the partial derivative of z with respect to y, we can relabel as f sub y, and then the differential of y we can interpret as y minus y naught. And making those little substitutions or reinterpretations really helps us see this idea behind the total differential of a function is really the same as the linear approximation for that function or finding the tangent plane for that function at a given point. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and look at an example that uses the idea of a total differential. So we're given the function z is equal to x squared plus 3xy minus y squared, and we're asked to find dz, that is the total differential of our function. Once we find the total differential of z, we're going to compute the total differential if x were to change from x equals 2 to x equals 2.5, and y were to change from 3 to 2.96. All right, so the first thing we can do is find the total differential of our function using our formula here, and then we can evaluate the total differential of our function using the given information. So to construct our total differential, we need to find the partial derivative of our surface with respect to x. And so if we differentiate our function here with respect to x, the first term is going to turn into a 2x. For the second term, remember we treat y as if it is a constant factor. So it's really like the derivative of 3x that gets multiplied by y, and that will just give us 3y. Then we have to add to that the derivative of negative y squared, but when we're differentiating with respect to x, y is going to be a constant. So the derivative of the constant negative y squared is 0. So our partial derivative with respect to x, or f sub x, is just 2x plus 3y. And so now we need to change gears and compute the partial derivative of our function with respect to y instead. So now x's are the constant, so x squared is going to have a derivative of 0 with respect to y. Uh, 3xy is going to have a derivative of just 3x, and negative y squared will turn into a negative 2y. And so now we can create this general formula for the general total differential of our function. So we're going to call that dz, and that is going to be equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So that's the quantity 2x plus 3y. We have to multiply that by the differential of x dx. And then we add to this the partial derivative of f with respect to y, or the quantity 3x minus 2y. And that gets multiplied by the differential of y, or dy. And so now we have to be a bit careful when we're using this formula, like how we're going to use it in the last part of this example. These x and y values are going to represent the x and y values for our starting point if we're actually trying to compute a differential. And so now we are trying to compute the total differential of z if we're starting at the point 2, 3 and ending up at the point 2.5, 2.96. So our starting x and y values are going to be 2 and 3. So the total differential of z is going to be equal to 2 times our x value of uh, 2. plus 3 times our y value of 3, and now we have to multiply this by the differential of x, which remember is just like x minus x naught, and so that's like our final x value minus our initial x value would give us 2.5 minus 2, or 1 half after we simplify. And so that's kind of that first piece of our total differential. Now we have to add to this our second piece, or our y piece. And so that coefficient in front of the differential of y is 3x minus 2y, where again, we plug in our starting points x and y values. Our starting point had an x value of 2. And we subtract away from that 2 times our starting point's y value of 3. So this is our 3x minus 2y quantity evaluated. And we have to multiply that by the differential of y, which is the difference between our final and starting y values values. And so let's see, we ended up at 2.96, and we started at 3, so we have to multiply dy in by multiplying in the factor of 2.96 minus 3, or about negative uh, 0 0.04. All right, so now we just have to do some quick arithmetic to evaluate our total differential. Let's see, for our y pieces, it actually is going to disappear because we get 3 times 2, which is 6 minus 2 times 3, so that's 6 minus 6, or 0. And then the x piece is going to actually give us something that's non-zero. We're going to get 4 plus 9, so that's 13 times 1 half. 
So it'll be 13 halves or 6.5. And so our interpretation of this total differential is if we're at our starting point where x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3, and we want to move to the point where x is equal to 2.5 and y is equal to 2.96, our total differential is approximating that the change in z values is going to be about 6.5. It's really doing the same job as a linear approximation or a tangent plane. It's just doing it in a different way using different terminology. So our primary focus is really on these functions of two variables or writing z as a function of x and y. But the idea of a linear approximation or a differential can be extended to functions of more than just two variables. So now let's go ahead and suppose we have a function of three variables. So maybe w is expressed as a function of x, y, and z. So if we have a function of three variables like w is equal to f of x, y, z, then we can extend the idea of a linear approximation or a tangent plane to this function of three variables. We just call it a linearization though because well, it's not going to really be a plane anymore because now we're in more than three dimensions. So how do we define the linearization to our function w? Well, our linearization is going to take our function w or f of x, y, and z and approximate it using the partial derivatives and the ideas we've talked about for tangent lines and tangent planes. So we're going to take the value of our function at the point of interest, so that's going to be f of a, b, and c. That's going to make sure our linearization or approximation agrees with our function at the point of interest. Then we have to add in some terms or pieces to make sure our function, or the approximation for our function, I should say, is going to have the same rate of change as the first partial derivatives for the actual function uh, f of x, y, and z. We also need to make sure our approximating function or our linearization uh, takes into account how f changes if we move in the x, y, or now z directions. And that's what these additional terms are going to take into account. So we're going to have an f sub x, which is going to be evaluated at our point of interest a, b, c. That's going to get multiplied by x minus x naught or x minus a. Then we add to that the partial derivative or the instantaneous rate of change of our function with respect to y times the quantity y minus y naught or y minus b. And we finish this off by adding the partial derivative of f with respect to z evaluated at a, b, c multiplied by z minus our z value of c. So this is how we extend the idea of a linear approximation to a function of three variables. It's really the same pieces, but then we add on an additional term for that third variable. And this keeps going if we have four, five, or more variables, right? We just keep adding on these pieces, which is the partial derivative of our function with respect to that variable, multiplied by the quantity of that variable times that point of interest coordinate value for the variable.